Hey everyone, we are back and we have a nice clean office to create a big mess again. So, I wanted to make some, I don't know, some fall colored flowers and I ran out of 18 karat gold. So I found a little bit. I don't know why I don't have any of this. I don't use it very often, so I don't order it. And then it's like, okay, now we're on a clay shortage. Why didn't I order it when it was in stock? But this is a Cindy Litz, or Leets. I'm not sure how to pronounce her name. This is a technique that she did with her colors in order to kind of not make them so vibrant. So it kind of tones it down a little bit. So that is why I needed the 18 karat gold was to put it over the colors just so it doesn't make it so vibrant. You know what? I'm going to make this a little longer just to get all the edges. And she makes the Zinnia flower had a tutorial on how to do that and I just love the colors that she used and this was them so if you want a really pretty zinnia flower I think it's um polymer clay tutor on YouTube and you'll be able to find it okay so I'm gonna run this through the pasta machine and make a quick blend and we'll be right back Okay, so there's the final blend, and as you can see, it's not quite as bright of a yellow or orange or the fuchsia. It's a little bit more toned down. Now, I wanted to do something with the petals themselves, but I, I don't know what to do. Okay, I want to make this long, so we're going to do this. Hopefully that'll work okay. And we're going to put it in this way now. This is a really, really big cane. And that's because I wanted to do a leaf as well. So I'm trying to think. All right, we're going to go this way. I'm not going to wrap this in translucent like I normally do. I'm going to wrap it in gold. I'm also going to fill it with gold. I would do 18 karat gold, but that's it. I am out. So hopefully regular gold won't look too bad. Yeah, I don't know what's wrong with my pasta machine, but it gave me a lot of ragged edges today. might actually I know all these decisions um I would like something in the middle and I could do gold but I think the gold as it's mixing with the yellow over and over it's not going to really give it what I want. But I'm not sure what to put. So we're going to kind of round this up. And then hopefully when it starts looking into a leaf. Or a petal or whatever. It'll give me a better indication of what I want to do with it. Right now, I still don't know. These little air bubbles right there on the top. I don't want to use black. 
Oh, I wish I could hear you guys, because I'm sure you guys could tell me something really nice to put in the middle. Okay, well, I do know I want some of this for a leaf. So, let me wrap it in gold, and then I'll figure that part out. I know this is a really big cane, so... We're going to wrap this in regular gold at the thickest setting. Might as well take all of this because I'm going to need it anyways in the end. Three inches here. So that's what we're going to try and get out of this. I have a feeling I am going to need more though. Maybe not. So let's make one of these edges straight. I think we'll have enough to go over it all. So we're going to start at the yellow. Okay. Now I could take that gold. That was my first idea, was putting gold in the center. And then something told me to do translucent, and I don't know why, but that would have been an experiment to see if we can get this to be, um, I don't know, just a little, a little bit of depth. I don't know if you remembered the rose cane we did a while ago, and I added translucent to the yellow and gold, and it kind of gave it like like a little in-depth look. So I may do that. I think I'm going to or just leave it alone. <laughs> I can leave it alone and just put the gold inside when I go to make the leaf. Because this is just an easy flower. But you know what? You know me better. I'm not going to do that. And I usually don't go this high. But I'm going to shove it down a little bit. Okay. And we are. We're going to go ahead and put leaf. Or we're going to put gold down the center here. Make sure I have it kind of in the center. Nope. See? Sometimes my cutting skills amaze me. Seriously. So if I do that, all right, it's a little better. Not the best, but it's at least a little better. I'll give me that. I cannot cut a straight line for the life of me. So I'm going to make this thick. I'm just going to make this at a number zero. Part of me was thinking of green, and then I thought, no, green would be just a little too... I think green would be just a little too dark. So that idea went out the window. Got it. We just need to. Doesn't have to go all the way up. So this is some translucent that was on the table already. And 
yes, the translucent. It takes the longest to run it through the machine. This is at a four. I'm going to take it to a two. And then to a three. Okay. Okay, so we're going to cut this off just about right here. And yeah, I am using the wrong side of the blade. <laughs> and you know me, nothing is perfect, so. I don't know what possessed me to use translucent. It's just something different. And if it does something really cool in here, then it'll be worth it. If it doesn't, it's not going to look bad, I don't think. Okay. And then hopefully when I make the leaf, um, that center will help a little bit. Okay, I don't know why this gold needs to be shoved down just a little bit. Okay, and then what you'll normally do is just take a strip of another color. Just so you know where the bottom is. And it's not straight as it is, but this should help it to keep it where I need it. Okay, so that's in the middle, and that's in the middle. That way you always know where your middle is. Okay, so we're going to reduce this to, I don't know, let's do seven. Let's do seven petals tonight. Okay, so we'll be right back. Okay, so we changed our mind, which you all know mean by now. And you know that happens all the time. I don't want a boring flower. So we're going to try and utilize that translucent. If it works, great. If it doesn't, again, not a big deal. So we're going to cut that in half. That's what it looks like right now. You know, which actually is not bad. But I had a thought. Just a thought. Mm, nope. Okay, so I'm back and I cut it in half because I wanted to see what it looked like. And it looks good. Doesn't look bad. What happens if we kind of alter the flower a little bit? We're still going to do the seven um, petals, but I want to see what happens if we kind of if we kind of distort the flower first. I don't know if it's going to mess it up or if it's going to look cool. Just have an old credit card and and I'm putting lines in it everywhere. And then we'll put it back to shape, but I don't know, just do something different. Alright, I think that's gonna be good. Okay, we'll do this side. 
And unfortunately, I thought of this when I already pulled this one completely out. So we'll see how this one works. Because you know me, I can't keep a straight line. So uh, and I want to do it in both because I'm going to need probably all of them. I want to make this a really big cane. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do the leaf out of it, but it'll be interesting to see. Bandit, shh. Go out there. No, go. Go get Dad. Why he comes into my office and bark. I mean, that's pretty just like that. Okay. Okay, so now we need to find that yellow line. Make sure it's still in the middle. Now we're going to roll it back into one piece. And I don't want to go any smaller than this. Okay, and I want to make sure and I'm even, so this should give me one and a half, three, six will give me four. So we might end up doing eight leaves, we'll see. So, go one, two, interesting and I'm going to just kind of make this a little pointy too not much because I cannot seem to get these even whenever I do but I want a pointy flower but not real pointy if that makes sense And I was only going to do seven. All right, so now that I'm doing this, I got to think of what I'm going to put in the middle of this. I mean, fall's coming. I know, we haven't even gotten to spring. And I'm already saying fall's coming. I always work like a couple months ahead anyways. I think a green will look good in there. I just don't know if I want a dark green or a light green. A, lark, a light green will spring it up. A dark green will fall it up. So if I do both, then we've got the best of both worlds, right? Okay, so now I have to find my little yellow right here. And I don't dare go past seven or eight petals unless I were to double them. I'm trying to think of how. Oh, yeah, I got a long way to go here. So I want another six inches. And we're there, except for the ends. Whoop. So. I think 
for there. Is what our petals look like. They're kind of weird. It's going to be an interesting flower, that's for sure. It's something different. I don't know what you guys like the best. Um, I know my flowers get all, most of the views. But there's only so many flowers out there and I haven't mastered them yet. There's a couple I want to try. I wouldn't know the names of them. I just know the shapes. I think we've done a sunflower. I think I've done a daisy. I'm not sure if I've done a daisy. This is kind of like a feather flower. It really does give the appearance of a feather. So maybe I can use that kind of as a feather for the for those pieces. I don't know if I've ever made an eight petal flower before. I know I've made ten. I think that was the daisy one. I usually do six, five, six, and seven. So, yes, this is going to be interesting. I don't know if I like the eight or if I just want to take one of those out. And make a seven. So let's see what that's going to look like. Yeah, I kind of like the seven. Yeah, I definitely like the seven. So we're going to set that aside. And um, I don't know, maybe I can still make that into my... I can keep this as a leaf if I want to, just like that. So, all right. So I think on the inside, I'm going to do some wasabi and like a dark green. Give it both greens with maybe, I don't know, maybe some orange in the middle. Let's see if I have any orange already out there. And I hate, I hate this color. I really don't like forest green. Unless I add some black to it. I'm just not a green person. I like the light green. I like a real dark green. But I don't like, I don't know. I don't really care for green. You know, this one's got a little bit of blue into it. So maybe that's why I don't like it. Um, I do have a regular green. So I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to take some black around that and make that a little bit darker. And when I finish that, I will come back. Okay, so we just made a bullseye with some wasabi and some dark green, which was just regular green Primo with a little bit of black added into it. Okay, almost there.
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You look out of place. This was supposed to be enough for a flower cane and a leaf. And I ended up making an all flower one. So I'm going to have a lot of this cane. So if you guys like it, let me know and um, maybe we'll sell it somehow. Okay. It's just not sitting the way I want it to sit. So let me grab my handy dandy, um, they're not cane benders, but our Teresa Salgado Tiny Pandora bracelet cuff makers. They work fantastic for all kinds of stuff. Okay, so again, I'm not using translucent to um, to pack. I'm using regular gold. Kind of limits you, I think, on how you can use your background. But, I don't know. It might look good just in, um, on gold or maybe a peach color. We're going to have to see how that's going to turn out. I will probably wrap this with some gold flake. And then I'll offset to offset the gold a little bit. Right, I just let's get you a little bit sharper on the top. And the same with this one. That's the only one I didn't do. Okay, so now we're going to do our switcheroo. Turn that around. Make sure the other side is... Laying straight. Okay, so that's it. So I'm going to just pack this. Um, I don't want to bore you guys. I'm just going to take a whole bunch of gold. I'll do one. That way you can see exactly what I'm doing. Just, just a practice here. Okay, and then what I'll do is I'll shape that so that fits right in there. So it's a little tall. So I'll just keep pushing it down like this until I get it to fit in there nicely. Okay, so let me do that on all of them, and I'll be right back. Alrighty, guys, we are done. So this is our packed flower. Okay, so we took all that gold, and we packed it in the middle of it. And now we're just going to maybe add a little bit onto some sides that are a little lower. 
I don't know. I think I might just um, wrap it in gold just the way it is, and it should be okay. So we're going to take the rest of the gold. We're going to put it through the pasta machine at a zero, and we're just going to cover this, and then it's going to be the fun part of reducing. So as of right now, all of that stuff that I did by um, chopping everything and stuff like that, it's not really showing up. But I'm also looking at the outside, so I'm hoping that inside it'll be a little different. And so we'll show you this really quick, and then we'll pause you one more time as reduce it for the final one. And then we'll lay it on some gold and see how it actually looks when it's laid out. And you know me and veneers. I'm not really great at laying things out. But I'm going to take a chance tonight because it can't be that bad, right? All right, so we're going to run this a little longer. And it got all funky through the machine. Okay, so I think we got it, though. All right, I'm going to run it through one more time and try and get it a little more even. And of course, then it gets too low. So we're just going to do that. All right. If I'm a little short, I'll just add it like I always do. I'm never one that does it perfectly. So I'm just going to add like a little strip along that edge so got a little bit over on that side as well so just gonna do this Pull off the extra. Yeah, I didn't want to pull out any more gold because I have to search for it and I really don't feel like searching for it at this point of the time. So we just work around it. Honestly, we just got a little piece here and there. And you're going to lose your ends no matter what you do. So you don't have to be really careful with it. Okay, we'll just do a little strip, a little thin strip there. I'm taking this at a number six. So again, it's just the ends, and we're going to lose a lot of it. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and reduce this, and we will come back and show you the final piece. So I'll be back in a bit. Okay, so we've got our cane not quite cut, but so the one thing, I'm not going to look at this yet. Um, the one thing that worries me is because I usually pack my flowers in translucent, and translucent is normally stiffer than any of the other clays. And that's like glass. When you work with glass and you wanna make like flowers or something like that, usually I'll use a transparent base to melt the opaque colors on top of. Because transparent glass is a lot stiffer than opaque glass. And it's kind of the same with the translucent. So I am worried because this is gold and I don't know what my flowers are gonna look like. So I'm just kind of cutting um, all kinds of different sizes. Like I've got a big one. I'm going to cut this at a medium. And then we're going to cut this one smaller. 
So I'm kind of afraid to look at it because I don't know how much distortion I have. So I'm hoping I don't. But it wouldn't surprise me if that's what happened. Okay, so we're just going to do that. And I don't know what shape to make this, but I have this right here. So I'm going to kind of do this. And this kind of gauges how much I need. So let's cut these. And take a look at our flowers first. Oh, okay. Well, interesting. Very bright. Okay, we've got a little bit of distortion on the petals. Once I put the gold leaf around it, though, it helped a lot. Um, I don't know. It was kind of nice. So on these, you know, you can just layer them. Just kind of lay them down. See, I try and make everything, like, symmetrical. and I got to stop doing that. Just lay the darn things down. Wherever they go, they go. And I'm hoping that gold leaf is going to kind of help. Um, kind of give them a little bit of an outline so you know where one starts and one ends, basically. Yeah, the clay is really soft right now. So, it's just going to be a bundle of flowers. I don't know if I would use that like that if I made something. This is just a sample. I think it might be a little bit too many flowers. Then you can also add some leaf. So, some nice green leaf on top. Or you can just leave it as is. It does definitely smooth a lot better than translucent does. So now we're just going to texture the back. And I could go a little thicker. Make this like a pendant. I've got this at a number three. I'll give it a really nice texture. Okay. Now we're going to flatten it, and I'm going to take something to make sure it's all even. Now we're going to cut that out. I doubt I would put that many flowers on it and I'd probably maybe put some leaves on it but just wanted to show you what you could do with it and you can leave it like that I think it looks kind of cool but you could also throw some leaves in between so I hope you like that and we'll play with the veneer and we'll show you the finished product at the very end talk to you later bye alrighty guys so we're here with another idea with the flower cane that we just made um, going to try and add a little bit of translucent over this gold that I've got here. And we're making the translucent really thin so that we can see the gold underneath. And it doesn't have to be perfect the way I put it on. Sometimes I go a little too thin. This is just some translucent um, spiral. I need about 
three full pieces here. One more and I'm going to try and shape this into a bicone so you're first to see this I made a bicone roller and I kind of wanted to practice to see if it would distort the bead after you make the bicone shape so this is going to be like focal size it's going to be one and a quarter inches okay I just want to know the problem is is when you make a shape which I did you know you need an exact amount of clay in there yeah it's really squeaky sorry okay so we're not quite there yet so that's a good thing but I've got this leaf I don't know I'm hoping the color will be okay with it this is really old cane so what I'm going to do is just wake it up, I guess. It's been asleep for about six to eight months. go too small but I don't want to go too big either so we're just gonna add little leaves here and there Probably going to do about four of them. And we'll make them different orientations. Put one, let's say I got one, two right there. I'm going to put that one right there. And I'll just put one right here somewhere on the bottom. Okay, and then we're going to add some flowers. So we're just going to do that. And you can go as much as you want, or you can just do a couple of them. I'm going to do about two more, I think. I'm going to overlap a couple of them. I'll just cover up a little bit of the leaf. Okay, we're going to stop right there. Okay, so this is what we got. We're going to roll it gently and we'll see what happens when we roll it in our roller. If it'll distort it or if it's going to change the shape but not destroy the flower. So I'm going really light with my fingers back and forth. Okay, just to get all these in so it is all nice and even. And you'll know. You'll be able to see if all of it is in there. And there's just a little bit more. Okay. So we'll do one final one. And let's see how it looks. So now here's the test. 
So I'm going to do one quick swoop like that on my hand and make it kind of like a barrel. And we're going to set that in. I wish I could put some kind of a wall. I know that Sculpey or somebody made these. Uh, I think you remember them. They were these little plastic ones. So basically this is what this is based on. But these are just so tiny and I needed bigger ones. And I'll show you at the end what we do for the glass. Um, because we have bead rollers for glass. So I figured if you can make them for glass, why not for clay, right? So you don't need to really press down too hard on this. Okay, why is it not going in? So I'm just going to look. I still might need a little bit more clay. So this is the hardest part because you get that perfect design on the front and your bike cone isn't quite as big as you want it. And actually, that looks really good. So we're going to add a little bit more. So this is going to be like the experiment, touch and go, to figure out, okay, how much do I need? Because you don't want to go too much, obviously, and then you don't want to go too small, or it's not going to roll. So we're going to put one there, one there, and I'm going to go one there. And then we're just going to add a little bit more. Okay, so this is just going to show as a bunch of layers, pretty much. So we still have to experiment on, I don't know, I put this on the scale yesterday and it didn't even register. So I created the perfect amount that I needed for it but I couldn't weigh it because it, it wouldn't register and I was going in grams so I'm not quite sure why it didn't register so I don't know I don't know how to do this honestly I don't know how I'm going to figure this one out because I'd hate to make a really beautiful thing and then end up destroying it because obviously I didn't put enough on I'm just putting kind of like the flowers right over the other ones in some instances. Okay, I'll put one right here. You know, I'm not going to put that there. All right, so now we're going to roll it again. So I'm going to have to find out how I'm going to be able to measure this. You know, you could cut out little circles and figure out how much you need, but you can't cut out little circles when you're putting on your flowers. So that's where I came into the problem, was what do I do after the decorations go on? Because if you want it perfect, you put it in there. But if you're adding to it, you can't put as much in there. You've got to back off a little bit. And I don't know what these little slivers weigh. So it's basically just going to have to be a trial and error. And then hopefully after a while, I'll be able to figure it all out. Okay, so these are all in. Did it destroy my bead? Nope. Gave it a lot more interest. So again, I'm just going to go like that just to help it along. And I'm hoping this is it, guys. <laughs> oh, I think we might be there. Okay, that's weird. Now I can't get it back. Okay, so we're just going to do a couple more times. And there you go. So look at that. It did not... Well, you got a little bit of distortion on one of the flowers, but not bad. So this could be a really nice focal bead. Okay, so I want to also show you one thing. This is a 3D printer that I use. Um, I have to use like a program like AutoCAD and stuff like that in order to make the design. 
Not the easiest thing in the world. Now, because it's an FDM printer, is what it's called, each layer that it does goes up. Obviously, when you're making a bike cone, the layer goes up, it goes up, it goes up, it goes up. As it goes up, though, it leaves like a ridge. Now, you can see in here, there's just a slight ridge in here. You're going to end up seeing that on your bead as well. It is very, something that isn't really noticeable. And all you have to do is sand it and you'll remove it at all or completely so i'm trying different ways in order to do this this um i made a barrel okay so let's just say this is a barrel because this is easy it's angled i don't have the lines as much but the barrel one is an arc so it's a little more round and that's creating a little bit more lines so I'm gonna have to say I will work as much as I can to try and get that off, but it does not look like it's gonna happen. Um, but I really like this. I think this is really cool. This is gonna be really fun. So I'm gonna go pop that in the oven. Um, I might make two smaller ones just like the. Uh, no, I don't because I want this to be the focal piece. So I don't want. Uh, maybe I can do two, two bicones and that way it kind of accents it over here. So I'm gonna make two more of these. I'm gonna throw them in the oven. And then I'll come out and show you what it looks like all sanded and, and ready to go on something. Hopefully. But anyways, we'll talk to you in a little bit. Bye-bye. Hey guys, we're going to make this really quick because we made this video a lot longer than we wanted to. But for me, I think the bike homes are going to be best for making abstract beads or decorating them outside without um, running them back through this thing. If you go really light, you might not get distortion, but I'll show you what I mean. So I weighed this out, two ounces, or two ounces, two grams is what I got. I'm hoping I'm right, uh, and I am. Okay, so that's it that way. And I don't know if you can see those little fine lines. Um, they look pretty cool. I'm going to leave it alone, but once I sand it, I mean, they all go away. Anyways, but let's show you what came out of the oven real quick. So these are the ones that I made with the flowers. And as you can see, um, some of them are okay, but there is a little bit of distortion. It's not that bad. And the point that these are handmade and abstract or whatever, it really doesn't matter. I, I'm still going to use them. And then I went ahead and made two smaller ones. Um, these distorted a little bit more. So I thought that was kind of odd. But I still like them. And yeah, you see you get a little bit of those ridges in there, which kind of look cool. Um, it doesn't take away from the design or anything like that. But again, if you really, really want to get rid of them, just do that. And then if I put sandpaper through this, I think it'll be gone real quick. Here, let me just, like, really quick. So this isn't the sandpaper I would use, but... And I don't sand. I usually put them in a tumbler. And I don't know if the tumbler would make them smooth, though. It might because it will take out anything that's rough. But they're not really, they're not really, really bad. Yeah, so they're already gone right there. So if you ran your fingers across them, you could feel a little bit. But I'm just trying to warn you, let you know that they will have ridges on there. They don't look bad. You can't even see them. So I'm not going to worry about them. So I hope you like them. Um, I still got to figure out the price on these. These are going to probably run anywhere from, I don't know, I, I really don't know yet. So once I figure that out, I'll let you guys know. So you guys have a wonderful night, and we'll see you on Wednesday.